super super excited to have you here thank you so much for joining us once again yo by the way fun fun fact i just discovered that i think i actually have a hidden talent okay so this is going to be my talent show <laughs> totally african got talent okay i just discovered that i think i can actually speak in different accents i have an accent speaking talent so here we go let me show you let's start with like my motherland uganda all right uh let's start okay welcome to the totally african podcast we are happy to have you here <laughs> okay uh let's see let's see what else we got oh let's go west africa nigeria ah abi now that you'll be here, make you smash that subscribe button now. What are you waiting for now? What's him be waiting? What's him be holding you back? Make you smash that subscribe button right now, brother. Uh-uh. <laughs> All right, let's see. What else can I do? Oh, this is a, one of my favorite accents, the British accent, right? Let's try a British accent. All right. All right. Oh mate, like while you're here, eh? You you know you might as well just uh, click that like button. <laughs> All right, eh? <laughs> Click that like button. Click that subscribe button. All right, and make you share share this with your friend and and all right, mate. <laughs> all right, what else do I have? What else do I have? Uh, oh, I love South African accents. Um, let's do a South African accent. All right, guys, welcome to the Totally African Podcast. Eh? Uh, my name is Bob. Uh, Bob. <laughs> my name is Bob. I'm uh, I'm your host here of the Totally African Podcast. It's very nice to have you. And, uh, oh, Australian accent. This one's kind of hard. Let me see if I can think it through. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm down under, eh? And <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a no? Yeah. It's a no? All right, that's where I'll stop. That's where I'll stop. You guys have to rate me in that. <laughs> rate me in the comment box below. Rate me. But once again, welcome to the Totally African Podcast. It's super, super nice to have you here. Thank you to all our new subscribers, everyone who has just joined on to this, this movement that we have going on here. And, you know, we're just here to put a spotlight on amazing Africans from all around the world doing amazing things. Just to hear their ideas, their experiences, their thoughts. And it's another really, really great episode. And uh, before we jump into today's episode, like I said before in my other accents, don't make me bring back that accent. Go down there, hit the subscribe button, okay? <laughs> Hit that subscribe button, hit that uh, like button, share this with your friends, share this with your peoples. We're trying to grow this and to share this vision, telling Africa's story here at the Totally African Podcast. Now, before we hop on to the video itself, which is a really, really great interview, really great guy, uh, we actually have a, a thing that we do here every week or every episode, which is uh, we do like a spotlight. So we do this spotlight on an African creative an african content creator something along those lines and just put a spotlight on them and so this week i actually love love her channel her name is adiola fayehun i hope i'm pronouncing her last right her last name right she has a really cool channel as well she covers a lot of things with um with like you know news and everything Afri afrocentric right so african updates maybe news stuff we're gonna leave her channel in the bottom the link below or in this little box below just to check her out she's you know she's doing her thing and it's really really interesting and she adds her flair to it which i'm here for all day every day all right so now let's jump into today's episode this one is such a great episode his name is josh otosanya you may have seen him on tiktok or instagram or facebook he has been blowing up <laughs> his, his content is literally everywhere you may see him on the explore page on any of those social media networks but long before that he has been a comedian he's a and again like i said he's been blowing up on social media as well doing a lot of great stuff there and uh he to date he has 2.7 million followers on tiktok take that in for a second can you imagine 2.7 million people 
that is a lot of people <laughs> but yeah and it was in this like lockdown time that he just blew up and uh he's a, like i said a stand-up comedian and a self-proclaimed life advice wizard <laughs> when you check out his instagram page or his or his tiktok page you'll understand what that means and uh, yeah man he has uh, we just had such a great conversation and uh, we're just putting a spotlight on him and what he does you guys hope you enjoyed this interview totally african podcast episode coming at you let's go hello again and welcome welcome all to the totally african podcast we're here and uh super super excited to bring you another episode with none other than Joss Otasanya. Oh boy, yo, if you guys already know this guy, you already know what you're about to get your heads into, but if you're just going to be finding out about him, (laughs) buckle up, prepare yourself. (laughs) I'm super excited about this. And uh, thanks so much for being here, Josh. Uh, How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. I'm excited. Glad that you're here, man. Glad that you're here. So, Josh, for those who don't know you uh, or, you know, who maybe just... just a little bit of an introduction about who you are, what you do, and yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I am a I'm a first generation Nigerian American. Uh, beep, 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 beep. A lot of, yeah, right. I make, yeah, make a lot of content online, uh, TikTok and uh, Instagram, and I used to be on YouTube a lot, but I'm probably gonna pick it back up soon. And then yeah. I'm also really like I do a lot of stand up comedy, but you know, because of this pandemic, yeah, I haven't been able to do it, you know. Right. So that's why I doubled down on the social media thing. But yeah. Very cool, very cool. And uh so me personally, I started getting more and more into your content and just seeing what you do. And even like back in the days, like your stand-up comedy before this whole lockdown and everything. Uh <laughs> just finding what you do, like the comedy as well, and then the social media side of thing. It's really, really cool. And the fact that you're also playing more into like the personal development space as well, too. Yeah. So like how did you get into, you know, um uh, making these videos online or even like the stand-up comedy? How did that uh, start off for you? Yeah, so that's a good question. So my first dream was is playing soccer, right? You okay. Know, <laughs> yo, that was the thing. Bro. I, I was like, nine. I was like, I want to go pro. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, hear you. <laughs> I ended up playing uh division one soccer. I got and I was like, okay, cool, you know, we're getting closer. Yeah. And then like I had injuries, I had like a knee surgery, oh, like man. this whole train wreck, yo. <laughs> and so when I graduated, I was like, all right, that dream didn't happen. So I'm working my day job. I was working in accounting, you know, yeah. but I had so much free time. Yeah. Because typically it was always filled up with, with playing soccer, but now I was like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And people always telling me to try stand up comedy. So I ended up like going to some open mics, getting into improv Say comedy. Word. Yeah, and I, I got hooked. And then yeah. from that, I started making like YouTube videos and stuff like that. So that's okay. when the online video stuff started. Got yeah. you. <laughs> that's actually really cool. I feel like every African kid had that dream of being a soccer player, <laughs> a football player, or something like that. <laughs> that was yeah. like- that was goals <laughs> you mentioned you know being a first generation african american and uh, so for and your content and your comedy has a lot of that where you talk about your african upbringing and all that yeah. so <laughs> take us through that man so you were born in the u.s and your parents are from nigeria right yep yeah so both my parents they were in like uh around lagos nigeria and then they okay. came over they both actually came to America for to further their education. Nice. And then it was a mutual friend who actually connected them later. Okay. Great. So and they ended up so I they ended up like living in Seattle together and then that's where I was born. Right. So that's kind of how that all uh started. Got yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it's, <pretty> cool. <laughs> it's actually really cool. So how did they uh get so you were doing the accounting, which I feel like most of like the classic african parents would be okay this is it this is what we want (laughs) so how did they take on you know you getting into like things like stand-up and things like uh like the social media and the internet world yeah you know i feel like i got really lucky in that my parents are very very lenient like they're very they never really pressured me the only thing they cared about was that i was okay and that i had a plan and that that's like it. I wasn't just gonna be out in the street homeless or something like that. Like, <laughs> that's that's right. the only thing they really cared about. So you know, I was still working like as an accountant and everything, but doing all the other stuff at night. 
So it's like mm-hmm. I was doing both. And my parents are always like, keep doing the stuff you want to do and build that. it up to the point where you could kind of like make a transition over. Exactly. Oh, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that's kind of, like you said, that's kind of rare because most yeah. people want you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's actually so cool. But, uh, and do you feel like that uh, upbringing like, um, influenced your comedy, influenced your work and all that? It definitely, yeah, it influenced, it influenced my comedy and the work I put out. Yeah. Um, and it, it also, yeah, it influenced my work ethic because my parents, like, especially yeah. to when I talk Facts. with them about how they came up and how they got to the country, like to America and how they, really? all the stuff they had to go through. And it's like, okay, snap. Like, I, I really can't be complaining about anything. Facts. <laughs> so, Facts. You know, so I was like, I'm tired. Wow, when I was your age, you know, it's yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> we've all gotten those stories you know i had to walk x number of kilometers to go to yeah. school <laughs> that's hilarious but yeah man, that's actually so true like we have no excuses <laughs> we have no excuses whatsoever we literally have no excuses <laughs> no, no, no. but that's actually awesome man and uh, that work ethic has really paid off man you have blown up especially like tiktok and uh and all across your social media has that like how does that feel like that fame and that fame i should call it as fame or that notoriety that you've just sort of amassed over the past year or so yo it's so funny you say that it's like it's it part of it doesn't feel real because of this this pandemic it's like yeah. i spent so much time inside yo like right. it's not, <laughs> the, the, the one time that i actually had to uh go out and like i had a dentist appointment mm-hmm. um, and i had to see a new like dentist and everything because like i'm chilling with my family now in seattle whereas yeah. I used to be in new york and then i go to the dentist's office and one of the the dental hygienists was like wait a minute i follow you i, up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like what Crazy. that was weird I, yeah you know it's just weird i'm still not i can't even imagine like it's just weird. I think it's still just be on guard, to be honest. Got you, got you. And uh, so I was digging into your content, right? And I think you were talking, you had this video where you were sharing about it. I think it was on YouTube or I can't remember exactly where you saw it. And uh, you were just having this conversation about how I think there was the book that you read and how that book sort of helped you like realize the thing of like specific targets and all these yeah. different targets that you set, right? And in fact, the pandemic, man, I would love for you to talk about that, that, that idea of, you know, being specific about what you want and uh, focusing on what you want and going after it, really. Yeah, that's, that's a really good, yeah, so th- there's a book I read called uh, Magic Ladder to Success by Napoleon. Right. Yeah. I read it because there was a, there's a rapper that I follow, his name's Russ, who he said that was one of the books that helped him get to where he's at in his career, so I was like, let okay. me copy that. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> so right now. I read the book, and one of the biggest things that stuck out to me was he talks about and this is a guy who spent like 25 plus years just studying successful people and like analyzing them and everything right and he found out that one of the things that they all had is like having a very clearly defined goal and uh, and he's saying that a lot of people have like a vague idea of where they want to go well, i kind of want you know i'm trying to but they, they like if you ask them they don't have a very specific answer i want yeah. x amount of results in x amount of time and it's it's having that specific goal and focusing on that with no distractions. Like that. In the video you talked about, it's like yeah. I realized I don't know. Like, if there's one good thing that came out of the pandemic, at least for me, it's that it took away all distractions. I can't go out and party. I can't right. go, like I, I'm just not distracted by things. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Man, that is so real. And when I watched that, I resonated heavy with that because of the fact that even I in my own life I realized the problem of like distractions and how um we have so many distractions and until you're able to like tune everything out kind of thing you know and be able to zone in and focus on what you're doing uh and even that idea of being specific man that is so key that is so so key and how how like so as an as an idea of specificity how would you say this is like I want x number of in your idea how did you implement it in your own life let's say for example yeah so i I would set like multiple goals but start at one at a time so i'm like a a vision board with like specifics but also i wrote what's called like a vision statement where i like 
I typed out like two pages of exactly what my life will look like five years from now from the perspective nice. of I already have it. So like, for Ooh, example, right. this is when I was like still kind of starting on TikTok, but I would say, mm -hmm. man, I'm so happy that I finally hit a hundred thousand on TikTok, you know, right, so, right. but like at the time I had like, you know, hundred followers, you know what I mean? I didn't have anything. Got um, you. And then, you know, next thing I know, it hit a hundred thousand. So then I went, I ended up just going really big. I was like, I want to hit a million. Like I so happy. I finally hit a million on TikTok. It's crazy. <sighs> like blah, blah, blah. Right. And and then I would just only focus on that and just being consistent and posting content. And the next thing mm -hmm. I know, oh, whoa, million, that's crazy. Right. You know? And I found that like, that's a really good way to achieve your goals is like you, everyone has their overarching, this is what I want out of life, your five yeah. year, year goal, yeah. but you break it down into smaller goals that, that mm. that's the, focusing on at a time you, you, you know, you check off that goal, boom, move to the side. What's the next one? I That's like that. I like that. I like, that. wow. I actually really love that. That idea of, you know, so you're seeing yourself with it. You're seeing it at the end, basically, you know, you're seeing yourself at the end. That's actually huge. That's major. <laughs> That's actually major. And, and that idea of um, breaking down in, into like little goals as well mm -hmm. to, as you, as you're able to work your way towards what you're doing. Right. That's, yeah. Really, really. That's really awesome, and uh, that has, I'm sure, has attributed to what you're doing right now and where you're at right now, right? And uh, so, what are some of the other ideas that you're implementing in your own life and as you, as you, in your growth and your personal development and all that? Yeah, it's <clears throat> at this point now. I try to. I find that like with making a lot of content, yeah. you're giving a lot of yourself. You know what I mean? Right. Like showing up every day to and. At this point, like number one, I make sure I'm always educating myself. I try mm -hmm. to, I'm trying to read at least like one to two books a month, which is something that I've always wanted to get to doing. Yeah. But my discipline, I'd always procrastinate and throw it to right. the side. Um, so I try to constantly educate myself. Um, I also, I'm still setting like mini goals and stuff, like mm -hmm. uh, wh whether it's, you know, something on like Instagram stuff, or I think one of my next goals will be um youtube specifically and okay because nice. youtube is hard you know youtube is really hard and <laughs> are you you're on youtube or do you yeah we do it on youtube as well too and it's like <laughs> that algorithm and playing with it it's yeah consistency as well too it is yeah it is hard so it's it's really like just setting keep it on setting consistent goals um reading and educating myself i find I that when that. i read books that talk about success a lot or read books where successful people are giving information yeah. that stuff is like that's like gold gold you know, they've already done it and they're giving yeah. you the keys it's amazing yeah that that's so crazy it's so crazy that you say that just uh actually a couple of days ago i was doing another podcast with uh, another gentleman who was he's in the investment space and he was talking about the exact same thing and you know about how this whole idea that you know we are these guys are taking their 10 20 30 years of experience and giving it to you in one little book for you to read so you get to get all that knowledge into man that's awesome that's really really awesome and so with this, this whole idea of you know because on your like TikTok, for example, and your IG, we see a lot of like personal development about life advice and all <laughs> that. Is that something that you just gravitated naturally into? Or was that something like, how did you come around doing more and more of that? Yeah, it, it was something I, it came naturally. So yeah. the, the, some of the first content I was putting out on YouTube, like years back, was all in that vein. It's like, I really like to help people, I realized. I really like nice. to... I love seeing a comment or something on a video that's like, yo, this man, I got to be honest, this really changed my, like I've had, there's even been dudes that are like, let's say they're like 16, 17, like, yo, Josh, I just got my first girlfriend and I'm going <laughs> to give you all the credit. And I'm like, yo, hey, that's major. Like, that's all you, like, you know what I mean? And I'm like a dating coach, but just like, maybe even if I give a couple of tricks on like how to feel more confident in yourself yeah, or exactly. whatever it may be it's leaving lasting impacts in people's lives and that like, I love that. I love doing that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So from, Oh man. And, and it is, you actually genuinely make an impact in, in this, in the little ways, in big ways, but just in those, a video on YouTube or a 30, 60 second video on TikTok, it's making an impact, right? So from what you're seeing and 
what do you think our people are connecting and resonating with that people need a lot of or people are you know like something that when you make a video on this specific topic let's say it's confidence or um or you know knowing more about yourself being all these different things what do you feel people are connecting heavily to it seems like was actually that, that's a really good question I, I find that people i mean confidence is like a big one yeah um, I, I find that like a lot of the messages i get to are a lot of people who like they say that they're let's say they're introverted mm -hmm. they're like yo right. josh it's a bad thing to be introverted like is this negative how do i right. how do i get rid of this and there's actually a series of videos i made called like things introverts are the best are doing yeah. the reason why i started making those videos is because like i wanted people to understand that like it's okay if, if you're considered an introvert. There are mm -hmm. skills and strengths that introverts have That's that right. extroverts don't have. Exactly, you know what I mean? exactly. And, like to know that like we all have, we're all special and unique and we have our own strengths. We just have to recognize our own strengths. That's and it's it. not always good to compare ourselves to other people all the time. Oh. So yeah, confidence is a big one. Right. And honestly, it seems like in general, and maybe it's not even just a specific topic that people gravitate toward, but I find that I think because of the pandemic, people are really craving because we're all socially distanced and all this stuff. People are craving to feel something honest, something authentic, mm. something helpful. Mm. They want to feel again, you know? Mm. Yeah. I guess you. Of that for like a year. <laughs> yeah, man. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy that you say that. But man, it's been it's been some time. I remember at the beginning of this thinking, oh man, this is gonna pass in a couple of months. And <laughs> here we are, like a year later. Man, that's that's awesome. That's really, really awesome. And I love the fact that you know you do what you do. So and you talked about that, you know, the fact that you're living a legacy, the fact that you're inspiring people, and that's what's that's actually what inspires you to do what you do. Is that right? Yeah. The fact that you're leaving that legacy, right? Yeah, I want to feel like if I have a platform, if I get a platform, whatever, that I'm using it as responsibly as I can. I, I feel yeah, like there are exactly. tons of people out there who have a platform and you, you wonder, like, why do they have a platform? You know what I mean? Because they're just <laughs> leading people astray or being super negative. Or, yeah. And, you know, we're living in a world where there's so much. I mean, if I turn on the news, there's so much negativity. There's so much so true stuff that's making people depressed. So it's like, if, if I'm going to have a platform, at least let me try to be some kind of man for real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so needed, man. That's so, so needed, it, especially when you sometimes go through your social media. I think sometimes we need like a social media detox, you know, when you yep. check through your, your feed and you're like, do I really need to be following this kind of content? You know what yep. I mean? Yep. And just because like that all feeds into your mindset, your space and whatever you're putting in, that's what you're also releasing out, right? So that's, that's man, I love the fact that, that you actually talked about that, that using your platform is, is a huge part of, of what we're doing here. Because even on this podcast, we're telling different stories, getting different ideas and sharing those stories with other people, right? And through that, somehow we can make an impact in a small way, in a big way, whatever way, that, whatever way shape or form we're able to do that. That goes a long way, man. That really helps somebody along the way. So what are what are some of your um, goals going forward? What are some of the things you're working towards as well and to the future? Yeah, goals wise, I want to, I'm trying to make sure, I feel like one of my weaknesses has always been like the business side of like everything. Funny okay. enough, I mean, I've been in accounting and stuff, but like, <laughs> it's, it's really yeah. funny to say that, but it's like, I, I realize that creating is has always come it, it comes more naturally to me i just gravitate towards that but gotcha. trying to like make sure everything's getting monetized correctly and like llc stuff tax oh, stuff right, like right. just the business aspect of all of that is something yeah. that i've always just kind of been like ah, i'll worry about that later so so my goal <laughs> this year is to make sure that all this content everything i'm doing is now a running functional actual business mm -hmm. that is it's moving generating multiple streams of income all that stuff that's it that's and it making it like a moving machine yeah that's awesome and, and i'm glad that you and talk about those goals early i'm sure you have a plan that you'll set in motion to to yeah. achieve that so i just want to pivot a little bit and talk more about like the stand-up so i know you haven't been doing stand-up i'm sure for quite some time right and yeah. uh man i have like i don't know stand-up comedians when i see you guys do what you do i'm just like how do they do that <laughs> 
damn. To go up on stage, all those eyeballs, all those, <laughs> you know, all these judgments and everything, and you yeah. doing what you do. What's the feeling of doing like, and that? What's your process that you? Oh my god, I can't even. even <laughs> that just blows my mind. <laughs> it's it's definitely it definitely is scary, right? So right. I mean, there there are still moments where I hop on the stage. I'm like, yo, I am terrified. This <laughs> or like if a comedian that goes up before me, like just bombed, or the, the audience is just sitting there, I'm like, oh, I don't want to go up. Oh my god, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's nerve wracking. Yeah, and it's also very painful if you don't have a good set in front of a lot of people. Mm. However, on the flip side, if you do have a good set, you you literally feel like a superhero. Like, you feel <laughs> like uh, you're, and that high is enough to keep you going. So that even if you have a bad set, you're like you. you keep oh, I got you. That. It's 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 awesome, and it it goes back to the the thing I mentioned before, liking to help people because yeah, the gift of joy. It's like a universal language, That's right? So true. So yeah. I mean, there's a time where I had a show once and. There was an elderly couple after the show who came up to me like, yo, Josh, just want to let you know, we had a very dark and depressing week. Oh, man. And oh, they didn't man. go into the details of it, but they're like, but, you know, seeing you go on stage tonight, talk about the talking about the stuff you did, like, right. you were really the highlight of our week. And we just want to say thank you for sharing. Damn. Like, I was like, dang. Damn. I was like, I'm never going <laughs> to. And I never forgot them saying that. I right. Never right. That. That's just that like nothing can tra you can trade anything for that feeling, right? right? That is awesome, and it's interesting that you're doing the same thing. That's why when I looked at it, and you know what you're doing on social media and YouTube and all this space, as well as the um, stand up, it's actually a perfect match. It's like a perfect mix in a way because <laughs> it's almost doing the same thing, the same impact that you're making. Man, that's really really awesome. So. For for people who are maybe want to get either into like the stand up comedian space or into the space of you know creating content, what advice would you have? What advice would you have for people who maybe feel like, how do I even start? Or uh, what what if people don't like this? Or you know, there's so much that could stop somebody. So what advice would you give someone like that? Oh, I would tell I would tell someone number one, just st it's a it's I mean simple, but just start right. Yeah. Like because it's hard to. One of the things that held me back in the very beginning was that I kept trying to plan everything out before I actually Jeez, started doing it. So true. Like I would try, like before I did set up comedy, right? My very first open mic, I, I remember I wrote out some jokes and I delayed going to perform those jokes for like a month because I kept trying to call my family and talk to my friends. Yo, is this funny? But like, is this funny though? But like, <laughs> right. and it's like at the end of the day, and any comedian will tell you, it's like, you're not really going to know until you actually get on stage and so try to do it out. So, so true. it's so like true. same thing with creating content. It, you know, yeah. you just got to start creating and you'll figure it out as you, as you go. It'll make sense as you keep going. That is so true. I love that because that you can actually apply that to everything, <laughs> literally everything, even in business or whatever you want to do. That is advice I can take us so far because and what do you think stops people from from starting? What are some of the things that you'd say stops you from going for it? Oh, so one thing is just uh, what's it called? Uh, perfectionism, like trying to be perfect, and yeah. like that that feeling of because doing things like creating content, going up on stage, comedy, you're losing you lose your control of the situation, right? Ooh. You're putting your destiny in other people's hands right yeah. if you go on stage you, other people can judge you they can boo you they can laugh at you they can clap for you you don't really know yeah. same with putting the content out there you can get hate comments you can get love comments right that control and i feel like there's probably a lot of reasons why people might hesitate but i think losing control of the situation can mm -hmm. definitely make people be like ah i'm, I'm cool where i'm at where i, I have control right. around me yeah man that is deep i actually never looked at perfectionism like that and quite frankly that's something i deal with as well myself and there's so much times i have to like break myself and be like hey bob it's never going to be a hundred percent just put it out there and see where it goes <laughs> <laughs> but i never looked at it from the perspective of this could be it's because you're losing you're actually losing control you're because when you're working on it, let's say you're working on that joke, it's just you and you get to, you know, feel how it feels. And But now you're putting it out there into the world. Man, that is awesome. That is actually really, really great advice. <laughs> and I feel like some of, we all need to hear that. And uh, that's, I'm going like 
taking that a step further. So when they do, let's say if someone does try and let's say they experience what they experience, it wouldn't it be, what would you say for someone to just keep going in that sense or whether they get like hate, uh, let's say hate or comments that are not as nice, I should say, they started, let me put it like that. They started it out and now they're in this position like, okay, now what? <laughs> yeah, I would say when, when you start, number one, don't set too high of expectations for yourself. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things that starting is the first part, but continuing is also hard because <laughs> there's this period where whatever you're doing, whether it's stand up, putting out content, learning anything, yeah, you're going to be really bad at it. And your skill set is going to be far worse than what you envision in your head right. of how good you want to be. And yeah. that's, that's really frustrating. It's like, you, you feel like you're a funny person. Everyone tells mm. you you're funny your whole life. You go on stage, you're really bad at stand-up comedy, right? Mm. So now it's like that, how do you close that gap? So just understand that you're not going to be as good as you want to be in the beginning. You might be, who knows? You, maybe you're a prodigy, but you won't yeah. be in the beginning. So give yourself patience, you know, and keep moving forward with time. The gap will get a little bit smaller and you'll start to like what you're putting out more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, beautiful. Amazing. And that idea of you, I feel like the more you do, and this is something even in my own life I've realized, <laughs> like, for example, in the business world, it's the same thing that the more you're doing, it's like, you're slowly getting better. Each, 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 each iterance, each time you're going, it's slowly getting better and better. So that idea of not setting too high of expectations, which I think is something a lot of us do. We set the expectations way too high right at the start. Right. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but for, for, with that in mind, how would you say then for someone who is, going back to your first beginning where you're saying, hey, I'm seeing myself as, I'm seeing myself at the end, right? We spoke about that early on, where you're seeing yourself at the end, but now you are in this position where you're not there yet, right? So what would you say about that? What would you say for someone who's saying, okay, I'm trying to see myself at the end, but here I am in this current state and I'm not, I'm not looking like where I'm, 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 I'm seeing myself to be, if I could put it like that. Yeah, yeah, I would say that to not take I would honestly say to not take that moment for granted because what I'm realizing, I've heard, you know, people from like Jay-Z to whoever else say this in interviews. Now I'm starting to understand it is that there's beauty in the struggle and then ugliness in the success, right? Mm -hmm. That the true beauty is it, it, it's literally the journey of getting to that place. That's, that's where you learn the life lessons. The journey is yeah. what molds you and prepares right. you for that success. Right. Like if I relate it back to comedy, it's like, a lot of my sweetest memories are when I was horrible and me and my right. other friends who are horrible at comedy would go to open mics together. We would talk at open mics. We would just chill at like restaurants talking about our jokes and we'd all collectively bomb on stage one after another <laughs> at an open mic. Like all of those times, yeah. the, the beauty of it, the, the journey of, of getting there and um, have you read a book called the, the Alchemist, or have you heard of the book? Oh, I love the Alchemist. No, I have read the Alchemist. That book is Holy, amazing. That's one of my, that's, I love that book. That's actually one of the first books in that personal development space that I got into. I love yeah. that book. I love that. It is. But yeah, go ahead. Phenomenal, <laughs> and I think it perfectly describes the journey. Yes. The journey is where you learn yes. the life lessons, and the journey. While everyone's like, oh, I hate the journey. I just want to have it now. The right. journey, believe it or not, is what is equipping you to handle the success Facts. when you get it. Facts. The, the journey is everything. Yeah, you know? yeah. That is so true. And that book captures that perfectly because this man goes through a lot. <laughs> and yeah. in fact, even in that book, he, <laughs> he like he ha this is the same thing we're talking about, right? That's actually a perfect analogy because he has this outcome in mind this thing that he's supposed to achieve and he's supposed to get to but it's the whole journey of him getting there that is preparing him for that right that yep. is beautiful that is actually beautiful and the reminder that all this is for it's for a reason it's for a purpose it's for that preparation right to, to get there and uh so <laughs> i don't know if you would say that you have reached there but i would say you have you're someone who has arrived at some of your goals right so what do you do when you get to some of these big goals like you said you had some goals of hitting big numbers on tiktok so now that you get to those goals 
what do you do at such levels or what what advice would you say for someone who because sometimes we have that idea of like man i want to get here i want to get there and then you actually get there and you're like oh okay <laughs> now, now what kind of thing right that's a good question it's like it's making sure i'm fighting complacency right so yeah exactly i always make sure i do i gotta remind myself that i am i am not anything i'm just a dude like i'm yeah. not you know i i found that as you start to see some of these views come in the comments and the messages mm -hmm. if you're not careful that stuff can really blow up your ego and make right. it and now i see why you see like celebrities that are like oh like all cocky and it's like always remembering and ne number number one never forgetting where you came from never forgetting mm -hmm. what you've been through and also remembering that you you're special right but you're yeah. not that special like everyone's right. special and unique in their own way yeah but in a in, in a weird way that's what makes us all the same oh, it's like same. <laughs> remembering you're valuable and remembering your value but remembering like stay humble like yeah. you're not you are not some godly i'm better than people thing and staying right. humble i found that like when i make sure i stay humble i i'm still able to keep working hard yeah because i don't feel like i deserve anything i don't feel entitled to anything i feel like i still have to work for the things i want exactly oh i love that humility is so key is so so yeah. key and um that idea of you know even if you've reached these goals you're still putting in that work ethic you're still doing what you have to do to continue growing that is that is really really key and um and for, for with that in mind i would love to for you to share you know how for for someone who is now looking to let's say they're starting this journey from the from the very start right and they're looking to say hey how do i for example someone who's dealing with hate either at the level of where you're at where they are uh you know big success or social media or i wonder if actually even before i get into that question i wonder if you as you've you know become more and more notable do you experience a lot of hate a lot of feedback that is not as positive in your world or not as much yeah, I mean, I definitely see the comments sometimes, you know, right. always, oh, yeah, it, it, I found that it doesn't matter. You could come up with a cure to end COVID today, right? <laughs> and someone right. in the world is going to hate on you. Like, yeah. and I've realized, and actually, no, I saw a TikTok video where um, this person was talking about hate and hate comments and everything. And then I was reading the comments of that video. And one person wrote a comment that was like, yo, I got to be honest. The only reason I hate on people is because my life just isn't really going the way I want it. So Damn. I feel like I take pleasure out of trying to bring people down. Ooh. And that, that validated, you know, what I've always thought is that it's really hard to hate on somebody when you're happy with your life or you're happy with yourself and yeah. you're feeling good. But when mm -hmm. you're in a dark place, it might be hard to see someone else doing things that are good or basically hurt people, hurt people. Right. Facts. So when it comes to hate Facts. comments, I, I kind of, I either meet it with, with love. Like I don't, I'm not someone who, if I see a hate comment, like, Oh, you know what? F you like, I don't, right. <laughs> I don't, go, I don't do that. I'll either ignore it. Yeah. Um, block them or I'll meet them with love. I'll be like, yo, like, Hey, thank you for at least watching. Like, or, or, Hey, right. I hear what you're saying. I, Cause I understand that they're probably not in a great place. Yeah. In the first place. Yeah. Hurt people, hurt people, man. <laughs> God damn, that's so real. <laughs> that is so real. And uh, man, for real, that's actually such great advice there. And um, look, man, Josh, I want people to like dig into your content. So for those who are watching this and would love to know more about you, where can they find you? How can they connect with you and all that? Yeah, I mean, on TikTok, it's at Josh Otusanya. Uh, and then on Instagram, it's at Josh dot Otusanya. And then, yeah, I mean, those are the two platforms I'm on a lot. I'm also awesome. on YouTube if you search yeah. my name there, but yeah, basically. All right. Awesome. Well, we, we, you said you're coming back on YouTube, right? <laughs> we're, hold, we're holding you accountable. <laughs> we're holding you accountable. Yo, man, I really love this interview and thanks so much for your time. But before I let you go, there's a question that we ask every guest on our podcast here, which is how do you want to be remembered? Ooh, that's a good question yo <laughs> that's a great question uh okay i would like to be remembered as someone who uh who made an impact 
and use their voice or influence wisely and responsibly. If that makes sense. Yes. That, <laughs> I love that. that. I think that's good. Yeah, I that. love that. I love that. I love that. And I think you're already doing that. So you're already well on your way, man. Josh, thanks again for being on our podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much, man. It's been such a pleasure having you here. And um, I'm excited for people to dig into your content. There's such great vibes <laughs> on this. And uh, yeah, man. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. All right.